Ladies and gentlemen of Yardhaven.net, I am Carl Smart, and I am here to do a little bit of an unboxing. As you might have seen from the article that you have been reading, or if you haven't read it, there's links down below. I was recently invited to check out Magic, Magic the Gathering Aether Revolt set, you know, set expansion, or whatever they like to call it. Now, what that actually contained was one of these, the Aether Revolt pre-release packs. Now, excuse the mess of everything else on my computer desk while I do all this. It's the only flat surface I have available. As you can tell, I've already used it. So basically, what we got in this was uh, four packs of Aether Revolt, plus two packs of the previous expansion, Kaladesh, which when combined creates all this cards. Uh, we also got a nice card deck divider here. Got some sort of, I'm guessing a glow-in-the-dark sticker thing. I have no idea. And then we also got a nice little uh, guidelines to the Inventors Fair and you know how to how to build a sealed deck, blah 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 standardized stuff. Also, what is contained in this pack, as per you as is coming pretty usual at least for Kaladesh and now Aether Revolt, is you have a little. Um, I guess, a lot of people have been using it to put the the twenty sided dice in. But yeah, a lot of. But then again, a lot of people are just haven't been bothering to use these, whatever they're supposed to be. They're meant to be like dice containers, but nobody really uses them. So anyway, just go. Just gonna quickly go through the cards that I got. Mess. Uh, you'll have to excuse this first lot. This was uh, a deck. See, a lot of this is returning from Kaladesh. So, you know, it's not like there's going to be anything sort of major, at least in ter terms of what's being played and everything. Um, I could go through, like, card for card and stuff like that. Yeah, it looks shiny. But there's not really much point. Um, as anyone who has watched me unbox stuff before, the only time I will really go through anything is when it is of rare grade or higher. So as you can tell here, we got the Metallic Mimic, which was my pre-release promo card, as told by the stamp there. Uh, you pick a type, so you call it, say, a human, or a cat, or a cat monkey, or whatever, and that's what it is. Uh, and when other creatures you control of the same type enter the battlefield, they get a 1-1. One -one. It's a nice little boost. Uh, so is there anything else in here? Good quality? Nope. So I'll throw that back in the box. So now there are all the rares. I'll go through them last. So basically, it's the standard fare, you know, green bump stuff up, uh, red shield, your aggro stuff, white shield, your weenies and your flying, you got a billion and one artifacts, because this one was, this set was really artifact heavy, your standard black stuff, your standard counter blue, plus your, your tokens and your swamps and blah blah blah. Um... Not really anything to sort of run home about. At least not when it comes to deck construction. I think I just got a really bad lot. Um, so now we'll get on to... This is my uh, Mythic Rare, which is Planet Ridge. Search your library for a permanent card, put it in the battlefield, then shuffle your library. 
it's an eight, it's a six drop to, to cast uh to bring in and then it's eight cost to actually cast it. It's friggin' ridiculous. Inventors Fair, Legendary Land. Uh if you can train three or more artifacts gain one life. Which I really should have probably put that into a deck. Now, this one, uh, Aid from the Cowl, is one of the new ones that have the revolt uh, keyword. At the beginning of your end step, if permanent control had left the battlefield this turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, you can put it to the bottom of your library. Basically, revolt uh, basically will be about if any permanent has left the battlefield. That's what the revolt thing is. There we go. Behini's experience. All creatures get next three, next three until end of turn. You cast a card, convert a mana cost to three or less from your hand without paying mana cost, so that's not bad for black players. You got the uh, Insidious Will, where you choose to either counter a target spell. You may choose new target for the target spell or copy and this is a sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. I've got a feeling I got a friend of mine who's gonna really want that card. Uh Glint Sleeve Summoner Menace. Uh whenever Glint Sleeve Summoner attacks it enters the battlefield or attacks you get one energy. The energy counters from Kaladesh is still a thing. Uh pay two energy, draw a card, lose one life. And then we're back to Platinum Bridge. So that was it for the, uh, the little pre-release pack that I was given thanks to uh, the PR company that is representing Magic the Gathering at this time here in Australia. But it's not all that I got for the evening. Um, I think the next ones we'll start with... Yeah, I got the Planeswalker starter packs. Now, we'll leave Tezzeret. We'll go for Ajani first. Now, as you can tell, these things have not been opened yet. So, I don't know exactly what's in it or anything like that. So, just to show that they are brand new sealed decks that I have yet to touch. There's the rest of the deck in there. I like how they come with like a little, uh, a little thing for their deck to go back into. And now you get obviously two packs of Aether Revolt, which I'll put up there. I will also put another two packs of Aether Revolt that I got on the night up there. Guess what we'll be doing near the end of this? Obviously the other things that come with it. Quick reference guide, obviously, and a more detailed uh, breakdown of the deck. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to actually dive in to the deck itself. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you don't have the right tools on hand, and you hate opening friggin' cellophane. Oh no. Anyway, uh, this one, we got a rare straight off the bat. Solemn Recruit. As you can tell, uh, well, you should be able to tell if you actually have a look at Johnny here. He's a green white, so this is obviously going to be a green white deck. Double strike, revolt, uh, permanent control, left the battlefield, put a one on counter on Solomon Recruit, so you want things to die to bump him up. Johnny's age. 
So basically, search a library or graveyard for it. For basically the the good old planeswalker here. Put it, reveal it, put it in your hand, and it comes back and forth. There's a couple of copies of them. Aid from the cow, which we found earlier, and then it goes into all your normal stuff. So. Lots of creatures in this one, thank god. Um, not going to get too heavy into what's here. Uh, sorceries, vehicles. I'm still not a fan of the vehicle mechanic, no matter how much I try. Uh, some some knights, uh, green, white lands, and obviously tons of forest, tons of plains, blah blah blah. So that's pretty uh, pretty stock standard. There's a Put that back into the, into the box. Now I want to do this carefully because I don't want to screw the card up. Now we have Ajani Valiant Protector, Mythic Rare, uh, 6 cost, so 4 generic, 1 green, 1 white. Basically comes out at four life. His plus two is put two one one counters on any one target creature. So basically it's a two plus two. Uh his plus one, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and it's above your library in random order. Then his ultimate, which is minus eleven, put X one plus one counters on the target creature where X is your life total. The creature gains trample until end of turn. Wow, if you... <laughs> wow. You could bump something big into something monstrous with that. That is, uh... There's quite a little OP card there. But, it's interesting. Um, I have... Luckily, been able to get my hands on a lot of planeswalkers over time. So, usually, I like to use planeswalkers as the beginning of commander decks, the the nice one hundred card thing. So, next we have uh, Tezrit, Master of Metal. You know, if if I had the ability to add music to these things without being copyrighted by YouTube, I would so be putting some metal in as I said that. But, once again, he's also a nice sealed, god damn, very sealed, they didn't want me getting into this one. So, we'll leave Tezrit himself till the end. Two more booster packs, because boosters are a thing. And everybody loves them because boost pack means more cards. More cards means more stuff that you either sell or you put in decks for later. Unless you're someone like me who has like eight. Okay. <laughs> Just quick, quick story while I'm opening this. Um, when I did packs uh, last year, they basically did a deal where you could get a one of these uh, Planeswalker decks for, you know, I think it's 20, 15 bucks or something. So, of course, I... Actually, I might still have it un sitting under here. I'll do this without upsetting everything that's under my desk. Yeah. Wait. That's what I have sitting somewhere under this desk. Um, one of my excess Chandra decks. But yeah, the point of it was I bought I bought multiple Chandra decks out of the um, Kaladesh block because pretty much Chandra is my waifu. Anyway, Doc and Merchant, one cost. Three and a blue and tap, tap X and tap other 
tap X, untap the artifacts you control. Look at the top deck cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the rest in the bottom of it, any order. By the way, this is a blue black deck. Which is pretty redundant when you think about it. Anyway, Quick Smith Spy. In this battlefield, target artifact of gain this tap for draw a card as long as you control. Because it's betrayal. Destroy target creature, search a library, and bring out the planeswalker. And then we go into the usual bunch of uh, constructs, counter spells. Ooh, here we go. This one's a fun one. Just to give you an idea. This is a new one called Improvise. Your artifacts can help cast the cost of the spell. This is like. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the tech of the technique, but it was where you were able to tap your creatures and use them as a mana cost to help help cast things. This has the same thing, except this time you're using your artifacts rather than creatures or spells or mana or anything else. So go through all the Mana, mana, and then mana, 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 mana. All the usual types of stuff that you've probably seen a few times before. Um, if there's one thing that I will say is a bit of a drawback for Aether Revolt, is it just feels like there's ten ton of um, Kaladesh stuff making a return. And considering that was the previous set, uh, I really just don't like the way it is. Anyway, we're going to try and do this with plastic this time, because I can't bother pulling the card out the back end. Desert Master of Metal, 6 cost as per usual. Plus 1, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card, put the card in your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Neg 3, target opponent loses life equal to the number of artifacts you can control. And the ultimate, which is Neg 8, gain control of all artifacts and creatures <laughs> that target opponent control. I am so making a blue-black mana deck with this motherfucker as the boss. Yeah. God damn, that's a good card. No wonder Will wants that one. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, that was just a quick rundown of Planeswalker decks. Pre-release box. We still have at this t at this current time six boosters, but we're not done. There's one more thing that I got on the night: an Aether Revolt fat pack. For those of you who have never seen a fat pack before, what you're basically getting is well, it's not quite a it's, um, I'd call it a more advanced um, deck builder toolkit. Uh, a deck builder toolkit will have like lands and a bunch of basic cards to help you build your first deck. Um, fat packs are more specific in their in their use. Um, they are extremely straightforward. They are based around whatever set they are representing. So pull this out. Hmm. An empty box. However, I like that it's a box this time. Um, in previous iterations, what they would do is they would put a cardboard sleeve in the fat pack box that would extend it out to that, and that would be your thing. I like this. This, I can keep commons in. Actually, I wouldn't mind more of those. But, uh, and an ang angular design on the box this time. Instead of being a straight flat, they've gone angular this time. Um, that's going to help it a lot. It's going to make it easier to to do. But, as you can see, 
One more dice. Because everybody loves dice. A quick reference guide because, well, obviously if you're buying these things you don't know how to play magic. Mm, I don't know. Um, nice big fat mana pack. I've got mana coming out the wazoo. And the other thing that there is, is the Aether's Revolt player guide. Basically this gives you an idea on the uh, new mechanics. Gives you a bit of story. Plenty of story, story, tells you about the the main planeswalkers, story, spotlight cards, and then it gives you a breakdown of pretty much every card in the set. Whereas if I look at this, it's all categorized by like awesome things. But yeah, so there's plenty of stuff in here. Mind you, um, yeah, there's more. There's another Ajani there, there's another Tazrat there. I don't know if there are any more planeswalkers in this. For the first time actually looking at the exact breakdown of the There's no single colour planeswalkers this time. By the looks of things. It seems everybody's gone dual colour. For the moment, so which is why you know we go past it, we get to green, then we have combos, and that's why you find the two there. Hmm. But yeah, so well, the only other thing that happens with the fat packs if you do it right. Which I'm quite sure to bugger up because I'm me. Did you get a, little, a nice little uh, poster deal to go with the thing? Um, I usually don't end up keeping these even though the artwork is brilliant. The only reason being I have nowhere to put them. So that's going to end up going bye bye. The books I do keep though. Books I do keep. But that being said. Oh, and by the way. A little nice dice cup holder, or you can use it to separate your decks or whatever. The fat pack this time around is so much better. You know, you got a little commons box, the, you, you got an angular thing for easy opening. You, you've got a, a nice little cup box to... They've actually really put in some effort into this fat pack this time. I am very surprised. Fat packs are usually just very straightforward. You get rectangle box. You get cards. You get mana. That's it. So... Let's go through all these packs. Mind you, um, as per usual... As I, I've been doing already, I don't want to go into every single card. I will show them, I just want to explain them. And, um, you know, prices for these cards that come out of the packs will be displayed on screen. Uh, I won't see them on camera because I have no idea what they are. But every pack is done the same style. It's common, common, common. Commons, then you get your own commons, which are your silver, silver icons here. Then you get your rare. Oops. Sometimes your rares run away on you. Uh, Carry Zev's Enterprise, uh, four, uh, three cost. Sorcery gain control of target creature or vehicle until end of turn on tap it. It gains haste until end of turn. Because card which convert mana cost to a less from your hand without pay. Where was this on pre-release? God, I could have done some damage with that. I will even... 
I will separate the rays this time around. Anyway, on to pack two. I don't know why I was being so careful with these packs. I don't keep the damn things. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten commons. One, two, three uncommons. Then the the rare, and usually you get like a little token thing and a mana. So what do we got here? We have X cost, Word of Invention, Instant. It's an improvised one, which means you can use your Artifacts to cast it if you wish. Search a library for an artifact card with converted mana cost of X or less. Put it into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's going to be one that you really want to try and use to, to pull your cards out. Build your. Well, I was going to say build your set, but um, sort of build your field a bit more as I struggle. Do this. Haha, <laughs> this thing has uses. Pack three. Yeah, skip the junk, skip the junk, skip the junk, skip the junk. Another whir another, another whir of invention straight out the gate, but we already know what that does. And we have a shiny aeronaut. Airdrop it or not. Oh, it's creature, blah, blah, blah. Come on, good cards, we all say. Even though these are. Well, actually, which ones were from the fat pack? See, now I can't even remember what ones were from the fat pack, what was from what. <laughs> so usually the fat pack ones aren't all that great, so we'll skip over the junk. Sure, sure. Ajani Arden yielding. Hello, another planeswalker. Yeah, let's sort of get in a bit closer so we can read the text on him. Plus two, reveal the top three cards in your library. Put all your non land permanent cards with field display in your hand. And the rest on the bottom of your library. Neg two, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. That's pretty stupid. Neg nine, put five plus one plus one counters on each creature you, on each creature you control, and five loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. Wow, that's nuts. That's nuts, man. That's goddamn. That's good. <laughs> so that's another planeswalker. So that's, that, that that makes three out of this expansion. Ah, Metallic Mimic, which some people might remember I got as my promo card. So that another one. And I got a Grimmin. Da -da -da -da. No, oh, is it? Can't do that. YouTube will strike me. Strike me down, I will become more powerful on daily motion. I highly doubt that anyway. Easiest way is basically third one from the back. <laughs> oh, and look at that, another aid from the cow, which we already have way too many copies of, thanks to uh, one of the Planeswalker decks. So far, eh, I'm not really liking it. I'm getting a lot of repeats. Little repeats of Planeswalkers, that's fine, because I can sell those and make money. Remember, kids, support your local card shop. Oh, there we go. Scrap Trawler. Three cost. Artifact creature. He's a construct. Whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand and I and, uh, bounces back a lot. Basically, if you have two copies of that, you're going to be recycling him forever and a day. Because every time one of them leaves a the leaves the field, the other one comes back from the graveyard to your hand. That is a pain in the butt card, but 
what can you do? So, yeah, he needs expertise, which we've already got. See what I mean? Like, this is just. Mm. I suppose I blew on my luck when I did my Kaladesh, uh, my Kaladesh unboxing. And the first card I pulled out was Chandra, and then the rest was trash. <laughs> so I've hit, I've hit my Planeswalker, so that's the end of everything from here out on out. Gary Zev, Ship Raider, 2 cost, Legendary Creature, Human Pirate, First Strike, and Menace. Nice. Whenever Kari Zev, Ship Raider, attacks, create a Legendary 2-1 a legendary Red Monkey Creature. Token named Ragavan. That's tapped and attacking exiled token at the end of combat. That's not bad actually. Basically, you, you bring her in and it's attack with monkeys. I don't see a problem with attacking with monkeys. I think we're well, well and truly into the uh, fat pack one because we're not getting much that's really jumping out here. We have a green belt rampager. Get energy, spend energy. Ooh, and we got a shiny and a shiny eagle. Because shiny eagles are a thing. See, non shiny eagle. Yahini Undying Partisan. A 3 cost. Legendary creature, Aetherborn Vampire. Haste, which means it comes in and it can attack straight away. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies. Ooh, 1 1 on top. Sacrifice another creature and you get indestructible till end of turn. That's actually a really good one. And we got a, shly, a sly relinquisher. Five packs, but see if we can get something good. Hmm. Ether Ride Whale. It's a big ass whale for six costs. And it's a flying whale, because that's what you want to see. Give energy and kill energy. So next up, we have Goal for Unity. Five cost enchantment has revolt. Uh, permanent leaves. You put a unity counter. Creatures you control get plus one plus one for each unity counter on call unity. And a shiny consulate turret. And we have Boral, Chief of Compliance, two, 2 drop. Instant sorcery spell, cost 1 less generic to cast. Whenever a spell ability you control count as a spell, you may draw a card. If you do, get rid of a card or some junk. And a shiny thingy. Love shiny thingies. More shinies, more shinies. Shiny stuff doesn't actually increase in value unless you get like something big. Like you get a, you get a shiny planeswalker, man. You're in the money. Aether geode miner, two cost. Get energy, pay energy for things. Last freaking pack. Be something good. Well, I don't know if it's actually something good. It's shiny though. Midnight Entourage, four cost. Other Aetherborn, you get plus one plus one. Whenever Midnight Entourage or another Aetherborn who controls dies, you draw a card and lose one life. Cool. 
yeah, I just got a shiny rare and a, another skyship raider in the same pack. So I got two rares. Bizarre for me. I really don't know at this stage. So yeah, once again, we have Car Reserve Ship Radar. We have a foil Midnight Edge, or uh, Midnight Entourage, sorry. It's a good minor. Chef for Compliance. Call for Unity. We've got a whale. We got all sorts of stuff. But let's face it, the only thing out of all this that might be worth money is the Ajani. So, let's hope that makes the money. So there's a lot of stuff in here, it's not bad. So, anyway, that's everything. As I put the box away, because I'm going to have to pack it away. So yeah, uh, again, uh, hopefully you've read the article that I've done on the Aether Revolt preview night that I went to and got all this fun stuff from. Uh, thanks again to the PR company for allowing me to come along. And I hope that we can uh, do it again next time, when the next set comes out. Till then, this is Mace, signing off. We'll see you around maybe a card table one day.